to Studio 33 Art by Kay. Today I'd like to do a um, reverse flower dip using the bottom of a bottle. Um, this is one that's got five sections and I'm going to use the smaller one in the middle. So this is um, a 38 centimeter wide placemat that I bought from the local Kmart store. It's already cork backed and you don't need to prepare it with anything other than wipe it over um, with some alcohol just to clean it um, first and today I'm going to be uh, covering it in gold paint. Um, I've used the Araldo di Piolo rich metallic rich gold and the light gold mixed together with Australian flow troll. All the colors I've used will be in the description box below which you get to by clicking the title of this video. So I've mixed to a consistency where when drizzled back into the pot, it just forms a small mound for a couple of seconds and then disappears. Um, so I've made all my paint slightly thicker than normal, um, just so that the pattern will hold. And I've also mixed up some of the Vallejo Pearl Medium, with a big black mark through it, with the Amsterdam Oxide Black, so that I can get some beautiful lacing, I hope. When I normally mix the Vallejo Pearl Medium with the um, Amsterdam Titanium White, it does give lovely lacing. So I thought I'd try it with the black. And what I actually have ended up with is this beautiful dark grey. And it's just lovely. So we'll see if that works or not. So that's a bit of an experiment today. Um, so the reverse flower dip, of course, is one of um, Fiona Art's signature pours so i have learnt everything i know about this by watching fiona um, she's wonderful and i just love her work and um, i will be using a serviette or paper napkin to um, in the middle to lift at the end this one's very thin though so hopefully it won't disintegrate uh, so i probably won't wet it down quite often we wet them down but i probably won't um, because of that so without further ado, I shall pour my paint. Now, recently I've found that if I pour um, paint into the middle and then try and tilt it to, to spread it, it gives a much more even surface. So this is what I'm going to do again today. I'm not sure how much I need on there, but I'll put about that much. And then I'm just going to tilt that all the way around just to give that nice even surface. When you're doing a reverse flower dip um, over the top of a bottle bottom or dessert cup, it does need to be fairly level, your, um, your base. Otherwise it causes, if you have a little ridge, it'll distort your petals when they hit up against it. So I'll just spread this everywhere and then I'll just do the final edge part with the um, with the spatula or whatever I've got here. So that's looking pretty well spread. And you can spread it a little bit more too, just by giving a bit of a spin. Spin the other way. Be careful not to spill my paints in the process. Okay. So now I'll just um, add a little bit more around the edges just to take it all the way to the edge. Just quickly spread this. I'll just speed this a little bit up for you. too worried about the edges on this one because I'm going to be um, painting them gold later. Um, so I'll just use a heat embossing tool to burst any bubbles. Okay. So I'm going to first of all put lay down the little one. I'm going to put that underneath the bigger one. And then when it comes time, I'll just lift the, the bigger one off. The first color I'm going to lay down is the Vallejo 
mixed with the Amsterdam Oxide Black. So I don't think I've got this sitting very level. If you don't have it level, then you're going to find that you have more paint going one way than the other. Um, okay, so I think I'm level now. Right. So I'll just start pouring the paint in the center here and I'll see how it runs. It's the hardest part is getting the paint to run evenly. I think anyway. Because you want your um, petals to be all around about the same size. And see we've got more running off at the back there than I have at the front so I'm just trying to even that up a bit it doesn't matter if it's not perfect because you know in nature nothing ever is either uh, then I'm going to put down the global turquoise actually that's thickened up a bit since um since I mixed it and I think it'll be okay so again, I'll just try and go into the center as much as possible. And then I'm going to lay down the global Blue Lagoon. Now I understand you can buy global paints um, from Australia now and they can be shipped internationally, so that's good. And then I'm going to be putting down the Global Yellow Flower, which is a beautiful um, yellow colour. Try and get it to go evenly down each side, as I say. Not very good at getting in the middle here, I'm afraid. Oops. Right, and now I'll put the um, Vallejo again.
Now, before I lift off uh, this center one, I'm going to draw out just to give the petals some shape. And I'm just using the bamboo meat skewer to do this. These round placemats are great for doing a flower. Mm, spilled a few little drips here, but I don't think they're gonna matter. All right, so I'll lift this one off carefully. Bit of suction there. And now this guy, I really want each of those to go in between the other Petals. It's not going to quite do that though. Close. Yep, that'll be close enough. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the um, Vallejo again. guys in so I think I might just put a little puddle of the yellow and the Vallejo in the very middle Hopefully this will just give a nice little centre here. And one last bit of the Vallejo. And now I'll just draw into the middle just to give that a little bit of shape. Just use my heat embossing tool just to burst any bubbles. Now to see what's going to happen. So I'm going to place a dry paper towel. I'm not going to use a wet one because my paper towel is far too thin. And I think if I wet it, it's going to um, just move these out of the way. If I wet it, I think I'm just going to end up with um, the paper towel falling apart. So I folded it in half and I'm going to come as close to the centre in here as I can. Try and lie flat. And then bring it over to the other half. 
it's a bit high there, but that's all right. Now we just gently, gently, gently pat it down. Make sure we get rid of any air bubbles to make sure that it's made contact. Okay, I think we've made contact. Certainly it has on the side. I think I'm going to lose most of my gold. So I'm just going to now bring that into the centre. So where I can see my centre there. And then pull all these little side bits up as well. So we can lift the whole thing at once. And this is when you hope that you lift straight up in the middle. Slowly lifting it up and then off. Well, I've kept my shape mostly. I'm a little bit off skew here. And the middle has gone a little bit skewy. Not too bad. A lot of paint in the middle there. Okay, now I'm just going to use my heat embossing tool just to burst any bubbles and help to bring up the lacing. And usually over the next few minutes, the, um, the Vallejo will start to react and bring up more and more lacing, which I can see starting to happen now. So I'll just let that happen for a few seconds. And I'll just put a bit more gold around the edge here where I've lost a bit of it. Right, so I'm just going to use my skewer just to draw a bit more shape in here. Always make sure you wipe the skewer off between each time you use it. I just want to bring that shape in a little bit, redefine them a little bit. The centre one's not showing as much as I would have liked. Would have liked those petals there to have really shone as a centre part of the flower, but anyway. Okay, so now I'm just going to give a light spin. And back the other way. Not to spin too much.
I do like the way I've got that um, Vallejo mixed with the black, creating these little cells coming up. Well, I think we'll leave that one there and I'll bring you down for a close-up. So here we are coming down for a close-up. Certainly different. I'm not sure it's going to be my favourite, but um, I do love how the um, oxide black mix of the Vallejo has given this edging, which is really quite lovely. And it is still developing. Um, I think I needed to use it more than every fourth colour. Probably needed to use the Vallejo every second or every third colour. Um, but I'll try that again. In the meantime, it was an interesting experiment. So I hope you enjoyed that one today, guys. And um, we'll see you back here in Studio 33 in the not-too-distant future. Until then, stay safe. Bye-bye.